welcome back to my channel. Today is another maximum weight loss meals video. Remember, you guys can find me on Instagram at Plantiful Kiki or on Facebook at the Plantiful Kiki page for more food and lifestyle inspo. I do post lots of recipe and meal ideas there that I don't have videos for here. So make sure you check me out. And if you are not already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification button so you guys don't miss a video. It also helps me make more videos for you guys. All right, so today I will be going over alcohol and coffee consumption because you guys send me a lot of questions about that and I'll also go over the things you can tweak and play with for that stubborn weight that just does not want to come off all right let's get started okay so today it's gonna to be a super simple breakfast I love these O'Brien hash browns I just find these at Walmart they've got onions and peppers and are oil free and I just toss them into my air fryer now I normally roast them at like 400 for around 45 minutes and then while those cook I take nacho for his walk and then they're ready to go when I get back real quick I'm gonna steam up some chopped cabbage I or cabbage chopped kale this is from Whole Foods I like it it's already washed and chopped so I don't have to do it and I just throw it into my steaming basket here I will link the basket in the description box for you guys because you ask all the time it's so easy to use I love my steaming basket so I just set it on top of the pot that has some boiling water in it and then I put the lid on and that's it and I will let that steam for about five minutes okay so the potatoes are done and for the 50 50 plate I make half my plate with starch so I put that there and now I'm gonna add my steamed kale And I also want to have an orange this morning. It just sounded good. So I'm just going to put that there. And for dressing, you can do maple mustard. You can do some flavored vinegars. And I am just going to squeeze some of this orange juice over it. So that is my breakfast today. Yes, it looks like a lot of food, but I can pack it in there. You guys know. So again, just to remind you guys, I did a 50-50 plate to lose all the weight that I needed to lose. And that means that half of my plate is going to be full of a starchy vegetable. So this morning it's potatoes. And then half my plate is going to be full of a non-starchy vegetable, which today is steamed kale. And then I felt like having fruit as well, which kind of goes on that side on the non-starchy side. And if I were able to fit more in my stomach after this and were still hungry, then I would go back and serve myself, not this amount of food, but in the same proportions, I would do 50-50. And always start with your veggies first because you wanna fill up on the lowest calorie dense foods. You're not counting calories this way of eating, you're just eating lots of lower calorie foods before you get into the higher calorie foods. Potatoes are still a low calorie food. They only have about 400 calories per pound, whereas like bread, for example, because it's been refined and processed down, bread has 1500 calories per pound. So you can see how if you're eating a lot of bread and you're not able to lose weight that you're just consuming too many calories. So moving to a whole food like potatoes, rice, beans, oatmeal, those things are a lot more calorically dilute, which means they have less calories than things like bread, chocolate, chips, that sort of thing. So just to remind you guys, there is three ways you can serve yourself. If you are really overweight, still like 20 pounds or heavier, then you can start with a one third, two thirds plate where two thirds of your plate are a starchy vegetable and one third is a non-starchy vegetable. And you just serve yourself that way for first, seconds and thirds and that will help you start losing weight. And once your weight loss slows down, then you can move to the 50-50 plate. Now, most people should be able to get down to a healthy weight range with the 50-50 plate. I did not say to skinny Victoria's Secret size model weight, I said a healthy weight range, and the range is huge. There's like a 20 to 30 pound range that's considered healthy 
Now, if you are in a healthy weight range and still trying to move those last five, 10 pounds, not because you're in an unhealthy weight range, but just because you want to be leaner, then you can move down to the two thirds, one third plate where two thirds of your plate is non-starchy vegetables and one third is starchy vegetables. But there's even a few more tricks you can do before you get down to that step. And I will talk to you guys about that in just a little bit. All right, I'm gonna eat my breakfast and then I will see you guys in a little bit. The question of coffee, you know, do I consume coffee or do I consume alcohol comes up a lot. Um, and the answer is no. And I never have been a coffee drinker or an alcohol drinker. Like even in college, I was just not into it. I just never felt good if I had a beer or something. You know, once a year maybe I'll have like a glass of champagne or something, but it's something I never really developed a taste for, so it's not something that I've ever consumed. Same thing with coffee. Um, so it's not a habit that I had to break, but these doctors do recommend not consuming alcohol for sure because of the effects it can have on hormonal health and there's a strong link between hormonal cancers, especially for women, well, and men, um, that are, are strongly linked to alcohol consumption, even a moderate amount of alcohol consumption. So I do completely steer clear of alcohol in general because I was having hormonal issues. I definitely don't wanna be putting anything in my body that could, you know, reverse or put me closer on that end of the spectrum of things. As far as coffee, they also recommend not consuming coffee. Um, I do know like I read the blue zones and that all the longest lived people groups all do seem to consume a little bit of coffee, but not like American amounts of coffee. One cup of coffee is very different to like the four to eight cups of coffee that we as Americans seem to like to drink. So I would say if you're gonna drink coffee or you're gonna like try to cut back on your coffee habit, that that's a good idea to cut back. And then if you're still like wanting to drink coffee, I would just limit it to one a day. It's all personal choice in the end, what you decide to do. So if you can, you know, limit your coffee intake to a cup of day, if you're not able to completely eliminate it, then make it something special that you enjoy. Have it like in the afternoon when you can like sit with a book and really enjoy that cup of coffee instead of like slamming it first thing in the morning to wake yourself up. Unless you can take time in the morning and really enjoy that one cup of coffee and not feel like you're gonna take in more and more. And again, if you haven't read The Starch Solution or McDougal's plan for maximum weight loss, then, and you're trying to implement this, I do recommend getting these books so that you understand the basis of everything you're doing because I get a lot of questions of, you know, I'm scared to eat carbs because I've been eating, you know, high protein, high fat, low carb for so long, you know, what can I do to get over the fear? Well, you can educate yourself. So I was terrified too because I had been low carb, like high protein, high fat for so long that I was absolutely terrified to start eating carbs again because I did not need to gain any more weight. So I just wanted to be really educated in the matter. I wanted to understand the science. I wanted to understand why this was better than what I was doing. And so that's my biggest advice to you guys. If you're struggling with, you know, feeling like you're afraid to do this or is it going to work, then I just really recommend you guys educate yourselves. That is the best thing you can do is understand exactly what you're doing and why you're doing it and why it works so that, you know, when you do hit bumps in the road or your weight loss slows down, that you can rely on the knowledge that you have to keep you going and to not bail. I will link these in the description box for you guys so you can find them easily. Okay guys, so with my soup, I'm gonna have a huge salad. So I'm just gonna take some of this spring mix. I'm just gonna 
eat the rest of it. And I like to have my toppings in jars. Usually I have sweet peppers, but I'm out. And you can choose your toppings for the week and then get them ready in jars and have them ready to go in the fridge. And that makes salad prep super helpful because if you have to stop and chop everything up separately, chances are you're not gonna eat your salad. It's too much work. I'm gonna add an apple. This is a honey crisp apple. They're my favorite. All right, so for a dressing today, I'm just gonna do a creamy balsamic vinegar and it's super simple. So you just need a really good balsamic vinegar. I will link this one. This is the one that I always order. But there's several in the grocery store. One is by Napa Valley Organics, and that one's a really good sweet one. You just want it to be nice and sweet and syrupy. So I'm just gonna add a little of that. Probably like two teaspoons of Dijon mustard and a little bit of soy milk. All right, and that will be a nice creamy balsamic dressing. Okay, so for this simple vegetable bean soup, all I'm gonna do is start water sauteing one onion. Okay, so now that these are soft, I'm just gonna add the rest of the vegetables. And I literally just put in here what I have left over. So I'm gonna add some carrots, mushrooms, and zucchini. And then I have about a half a bag of corn left in the freezer, so I'm gonna add the rest of that. So now I'm just gonna add some water. So I am adding about seven cups of water. Now I just want that to come to a boil. And while that's coming up to a boil, I'm gonna add this roasted garlic marinara sauce. It's extremely low in fat. It's only 0.5 grams of fat per half cup. If you can find a fat-free one, that's better, but they were all out at the store. So this is what I got. This is how I flavor soup. It's super simple. And this will give your soup all the flavor it needs. This is like a super lazy way of doing this. Okay, so now the veggies are done boiling and they're nice and soft and I've got two cans of these white beans that I've drained and rinsed and I just like this brand, the Eden Organic Cannellini beans. So I'm gonna add that and I'm just gonna heat this up. I just wanna warm up the beans. Okay, now that that is all warmed up, you can either eat it like that or you can add some additional seasonings. I do like to add a little bit of this vegetable bouillon. Nacho ate the container. Were you a bad boy? Did you eat the veggie bouillon container? You did, huh? That was bad, it was naughty. So I will link in the description box the one I like, but it's by Orrington Farms. Um, so you can add a little bit of that or just consume it like this. All right, so I like to serve it over some rice just for a little bit more starch. This is just brown rice that I cooked in my pressure cookers. And then I'm just gonna take some of the soup. You don't have to use the rice, you can just enjoy the beans and vegetable soup. And I'm gonna be fancy today and add some chopped fresh basil. Okay guys, so I'm gonna have my gorgeous bowl of salad and then I'm gonna have my soup and rice. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit seconds into my stomach because that is a huge salad. But remember that no matter the plate that you're using, the two thirds, one third, 50, 50, or the one third, two thirds, that when you go back for seconds or thirds, you wanna serve yourself the same way and always eat your veggies first. They are the lowest in calories and you wanna fill up in the lowest calorie foods first if you are trying to get maximum weight loss. And don't go hungry. If you're still hungry after you eat an enormous amount of food like this, then have seconds. It's not about 
you know, how many portions of something you can have. It's about the proportions of things, how Dr. McDougall lays out in his book. So I did the 50-50 plate to lose weight. So half veggies, half starches. And this soup, yeah, it's all mixed in there. I still count it as my starch section because there's a lot of rice compared to the veggies in there. And so I do make sure to have an entire separate serving of vegetables. But yeah, you just wanna keep serving yourself the same way and eating your veggies first because a lot of times when you go back for seconds or thirds and you eat those veggies first, then you find that you no longer want another helping of starches. So the one tip I wanted to share with you guys about the soup is that, so I'll make that big batch of soup and I will eat that for like, four or five days and the first few days I'll have it like an Italian soup so I'll put like some fresh basil in it and enjoy it that way and then after a few days I get kind of tired of that and so what I'll do is instead of putting basil in it I'll put a bunch of fresh chopped cilantro in it and squeeze half a lime and that makes like a really delicious tortilla soup and then I found these recently at Whole Foods and they are baked corn tortillas there's no oil in them nothing and it's already done you don't have to do it Yourself. I know it's really easy but I hate doing it and anything that makes it a little bit easier and these are great too because my kids can grab these and just put some black beans on them and some pickled onions and avocado and they are ready to go so they're really inexpensive I think they were like 239 or 279 see if you can find them at your health food store they're awesome so I will take one or two of these and crunch it up on top of my soup and you have a really delicious tortilla soup but that way you can use that soup in two different ways and have a little variety while keeping things as simple as possible. Weight loss troubleshooting time. So as you guys know, I have lost almost 70 pounds following the work of Dr. John McDougall. I went from 189 pounds down to about 123 and I am 5'4". And I was able to see this weight loss in about, you know, one, year to about 14 months somewhere in there now if you've been following me for any amount of time then you know that i did the starch solution and then had to move to dr mcdougall's maximum weight loss program because my body did plateau after about 35 pounds on the starch solution my husband did not have to move from the starch solution um, and do maximum weight loss but i did so i did that and was able to finish losing the rest of the weight now, a lot of the questions I get from you guys are that, you know, one, you've done it for a couple weeks and you aren't seeing weight loss or that you've gained a pound or two. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. As you know, there's three ways to serve yourself on the maximum weight loss program. And the first way is to eat a two thirds, one third plate which is a two thirds non-starchy vegetables like rice, beans, potatoes, things like that, and one third non-starchy vegetables like broccoli, zucchini, you know, those sorts of things. The second plate is the, what I like to call the 50-50 plate, and that is the plate that I personally did, and that's where I filled half my plate with non-starchy vegetables and half the plate with starchy vegetables. And then the third plate is the two-thirds, one-third plate of two-thirds non-starchy vegetables and one-third starchy vegetables. Okay, so I get a lot of messages from people that are already in a healthy weight range, and they're just trying to lean out a little bit more, lose like those five to 10 pounds, and let me tell you guys that they can be the most difficult to lose because you're already at a trimmer healthier weight nonetheless there are several things that you can try to get your body to let go of that weight so the first thing you can do is move down to the third the two-thirds one-third plate and start eating more non-starchy vegetables so that would look like you filling your plate two-thirds full with non-starchy veggies and then one third full of starch. Now, if you eat this and you're full, but then you get hungry again, then you go back, serve yourself the exact same way, and always, always eat your veggies first because you wanna fill up on the least calorically dense foods first. So that's option number one. Option number two is to start out your meal. If you're doing, let's say you wanna stay at the 50-50 plate. This is personally what I would do because I like, I don't know, like mentally, like only like having a little bit of starch on my plate. I don't know if that would like just mess with my mind or what. I would rather start with option number two, which is going to be to start your meal with a huge salad. And I'm talking like huge guys, not like a little bowl of salad, just like a big salad or a big bowl of 
oil-free vegetable soup. So one of those, either soup or salad, and then moving to your 50-50 plate. Now, I can't imagine you being able to fit more in your stomach, but when you're hungry again, then you start the process over. Go back for another bowl of vegetable soup if you're going for seconds, and if you're still hungry, then serve yourself some more non-starchy veggies, and then if you're still hungry, eat that remaining portion of starch, and you should see your body let go of weight. Okay, so then I have people that are still significantly overweight um, message me and say that they aren't able to see much weight loss. Now, there could be a couple things going on. It could be that, you know, you're really just not washing, watching your portions correctly or you're not eating your veggies first and we go back for seconds, you're just getting starch. You could have, you know, maybe a low thyroid. So I would get that checked out because if you're hypothyroid at all, they can really make weight hard to lose. Also, you know, your age, where you are in life, women going through menopause, like there is so much change happening that that can really, you know, make things difficult, but you should still be able to lose weight. So just be really aware of how you're serving yourself. Always, always, when you go back for seconds or third, serve yourself the same way and start with your veggies. Snacking can be a really big deal. When I talk to some people, they're like, well, you know, I... I'll have this for snack or that for snack. And it's like really the snacking should be limited to fruit and vegetables, some bean hummus to dip them in, but not chips or crackers or more calorically dense foods like that. Other than that, guys, like really it's just about enjoying the food you're eating, eating real food. It's the processed food that'll get you into trouble. It's the processed food and the oils that will really get you into trouble and peanut butter. I know peanut butter can be a problem for everybody. You know, some people don't have to cut out nuts to lose weight. Like my husband didn't have to cut out nuts and seeds. I did personally, but now I've reintroduced them into my diet and I haven't gained any weight. So it's not forever, you know, it's just to give your body a chance to burn fat and get rid of what it doesn't need. And I do want to remind you guys, like if you are just transitioning, you're just starting, you know, maximum weight loss or trying to lose weight and moving to a whole food plant-based diet, like it is really common to be really hungry. I was like ravenous and I'd already been plant-based. I'd already been doing starch solution for like four, five, six months when I went to like fully whole food plant-based maximum weight loss mode. I was hungry all the time. Like I would eat these huge portions of food, get full, but I was hungry like 20 minutes later and I just kept eating. I just kept serving myself the same and I kept eating. And eventually, like after a week or two, my body adjusted and I wasn't starving all the time. But don't let yourself go hungry because there's a difference. Like, yes, it's normal to feel really hungry, but don't ignore it feed yourself. Like you're not supposed to work through the hunger. This isn't like traditional dieting, you know, the whole restriction thing. Like it is seriously, like if you are hungry, then eat, just keep serving yourself the same way. Eat those veggies first. You know, if you're really starving in between meals, like in an apple or some fruit and some other veggies are not going to cut it, then have an early meal. It's okay. Like the first week or two I was eating, 50 50 plates, like I swear, all day long, which is a pain when you work out of the home and you've got life to do. But, like, just know that it will pass and you'll keep losing weight. People also ask me if it was normal to feel tired. I don't personally remember feeling tired. Again, if you're feeling really tired, I would say make sure you're eating enough. And it can also be really normal to go through like a detox phase. You know, sometimes people feel worse before they feel better, but not everybody does and it's different for everyone. I know that my husband did go through like a detox phase and he, you know, did not feel great. He felt almost like flu-like symptoms and grumpy and lethargic. And then that went away after a couple weeks and he has felt great ever since. Whereas for me is I just like started feeling so much better quickly. So everybody's different, but I have heard Dr. 
Berman talk about, you know, detox symptoms as well as a couple of the other doctors that it can be common. Okay guys, so these tomato curried potatoes are really easy to make. We're gonna start off by making a base to cook the spices in. And I learned how to do this from my friend Harshdeep Swami. He has an amazing YouTube channel. Make sure you guys check him out. I will link it in the description box for you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna take five Roma tomatoes and I'm gonna put them into my blender. Then I'm gonna take a half a medium sized onion and I'm gonna put that in there as well. And then three cloves of garlic and then about a teaspoon or two of ground ginger. This is just ginger paste that I buy in the produce section at the grocery store because I like the convenience of not having to grate anything and then wash it. So what you'll have is just like this tomato sauce and this is what we are going to throw in the pan with all our spices to help develop the flavors. Okay so for the curry potatoes I'm just going to take a little pinch of cumin seeds and let them toast up for a couple minutes. Okay so the cumin seeds have browned they kind of just like sizzle and pop and that's how you know they're done because they'll be nice and brown and so at this point we're gonna add our tomato mixture okay so to the tomato mixture I'm gonna add some coriander I'm gonna do one teaspoon of coriander I'm gonna do one teaspoon of curry powder I'm gonna do like a quarter teaspoon of mango powder and then a quarter teaspoon of turmeric powder. You don't have to do this. The curry powder has turmeric in it. I just like a little more. And all you're gonna do is let these spices cook down in the tomato sauce until most of the liquid is absorbed. And I'm actually gonna add a teaspoon of this Rani Chana Masala mix. It is my absolute favorite. I ordered it on Amazon. I'll link it for you guys. I think this has the best flavor in the world. So I'm gonna add a teaspoon of that to this. Okay, so as you guys can see, the tomatoes have cooked down into more of a paste. So now I'm just gonna take about three to four potatoes that I had steamed last night. I pulled those out of the fridge and chopped them up. And I'm just gonna add them to the tomato mixture and let them sit in there just till they're heated through. Alright, so the potatoes are all heated up and you guys know I love cilantro on everything. So I just like to add a little bit of cilantro and then this is ready to eat. And you can add salt if you use salt. This is one of our favorites. So for the eggplant and spinach curry, it's really simple. I've just cleaned out my pan real quick that I used for the potatoes and I'm gonna again toast some cumin seeds. And I'll toast, I'll toast about an eighth of a teaspoon. You can do more or less. Cumin has a really strong flavor, so my kids, you know, they enjoy a little bit, but not a ton. So you wanna let them pop and kind of brown up. And now that the cumin seeds have browned up, I'm just gonna add two chopped tomatoes and one small, thinly sliced onion. Then I'm going to add a little minced garlic. You can mince fresh, but I was out. And then like a teaspoon of grated ginger. And I'm going to add just a little splash of water just to keep it from sticking to the pan. And so I'm just going to let these cook down for a few minutes. And while they cook down, I want them to cook down with the spices. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of garam masala. I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of coriander. And then one teaspoon of curry powder. Okay, 
Okay, so now that these onions and tomato have cooked down with the spices, I'm just gonna add some chopped steamed eggplant. If you can find it frozen, then you can just throw the frozen in here and let it heat up. My store was out, so I just chopped some up and steamed it real quick. Now to that, I'm gonna add a couple handfuls of spinach. And now that the spinach has wilted down a little bit, I'm gonna add just a little bit of soy milk to make it nice and creamy. And then of course to this, I'm also gonna add a little bit of chopped cilantro. You can leave that out if you don't like cilantro. And that will be ready to eat. All right, so this is so tasty. And I did forget to mention that in the eggplant curry, I add a tablespoon of maple syrup to it just cause like in the restaurants when you have an eggplant curry, it's usually sweeter and it's cooked in coconut milk. And I'm not using coconut milk, but I did sweeten it a little bit. You can leave it out if you want. I think it's delicious with just a little bit of maple syrup, but the choice is up to you. And these curry potatoes, the recipe is inspired by Harsh Deep. He has an amazing YouTube channel. It's all oil-free, whole food, plant-based Indian food. He will change your Indian food making life. So if you haven't subscribe to him, make sure you do that. I will link the video for these potatoes. I didn't do the recipe exactly. I adjust things for our taste and for the kids' taste, um, but his recipe is excellent. So I will link his recipe as well as put how I adjusted mine in the description box below. Now, my husband wasn't a huge fan of the eggplant curry. I thought it was delicious. You thought it was delicious, right? Yeah, I loved it. <laughs> you loved it, because yeah. it's good. So anyway, yes. check it out. All right, so I felt like having some chocolate and ice cream, so I'm just gonna take some frozen, really ripe bananas, and I'm gonna chop them up. So I'm just gonna take two frozen bananas, and I chop them just that way my blender has an easier time blending them up. I'm just gonna pop them in there. And then I'm gonna put in one tablespoon of cocoa powder. And you can buy fat-free cocoa powder at Whole Foods, but I have this bag from Costco, so I'm trying to get through it before I get the fat-free stuff. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of soy milk to it. All right, and see, now it's like this delicious chocolate ice cream. Oh my God, it's gonna be so good. All right guys, see, this is so good. And I know the question is, will those two bananas, will I eat all of that? And yes, I will. That made this bowl right here. And it is so good. Best dessert. I love to have this while I'm watching TV before I go to bed. I am a night snacker. You cannot help it. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. Make sure you write your questions in the comments so that I know how to answer you guys in the next video. Remember to keep this journey about health and not just about the skinny. You are beautiful. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.